Okay, we're getting ready to do the transmission now. So we pulled out the uh, tranny here. So you look in here at the dogs. You can see how they're relatively still sharp. All well, the rang around. And you take the gap here, clearance. And you go between the dogs this way and the dogs this way. And you want to try to make sure they're still about equal. So this one is slightly closer to the low gear because it's got a lot of slop in it. But it's still not too bad. High gear is on this side. You can see the gap on high gear right there. And this is second gear over here. You can see how that was like that. So all this stuff has clearances in it. So this looks okay overall. You get a better view of the dog. You can slide it up a little bit. So your dogs all look pretty good. But what we did notice was that your shift shaft over here, we were debating on whether to go to a spline shaft so it wouldn't slip on here. And I'm looking at the shaft to go, why is this thing off to one side? It's not supposed to be at an angle like this. It's supposed to be perpendicular. So can you see that in the camera? It's laid over toward that way. This here, that's how it's supposed to look. So see how this one goes straight? See how yours is laying to the side like this? Mm -hmm. You can also see the groove on the back side here. See how it's laying, it's coming away from the shaft. Right. So this thing's getting ready to break and fall off. Even though it's welded on this side, it's, it's breaking. So the next thing is this thing falls off inside the gearbox in here. It drops in between a couple of these gears and then the transmission goes boom all over the place. Then it gets very, very expensive because it takes the whole motor out. Time to change it. Yeah, it's a good time to change it now when we just caught it breaking. And I wasn't really paying attention to that. I should have been. Now these ones here, a lot of times all the stuff that's on here that's really sharp gets in the way of inside the motor tranny there and it doesn't shift. The other thing is these diameters change on these. Some are small, some are big, some aren't. So we have to check that. First thing I make sure it goes through this hole here. See how it doesn't go through this hole? So this evidently is a big shaft. So that makes it, that's a little bit too hard to shift. See? That might stick a little bit. <laughs> so. Whatever that thing is in this, they're not even close. And these are supposed to be half inch. So this one's five thousandths undersized from where. You know, over here it's two thousand undersized, see. Originally the shaft looks like it was a two under shaft, which is pretty rare, usually they're oversized, not under. So you can see how the wear is out around. This is probably a couple thou over, I bet. You now if this one's on size, half inch. Just a little bit over half. Yeah, it's a half over over here. So this is a negative clearance right now. Negative clearance means it doesn't fit in there. Now. That's why it doesn't go in here. Which is good if your bushings are loose. It tightens them up. The problem is your bushings aren't that loose. Okay, now see this one it is. See how it goes into this one pretty good? So this one here, see it'll fit on this one. So all we gotta do is make this hole over here better. So this needs to be made a little bit bigger than what it is right now. Just gotta massage it in there a little. Well you can massage it back and forth all you want, but the thing is it's too damn tight. So let's go get some tools to see about fixing that problem. They make reamers for them. Oh, those are baby reamers. The reamers, half inch. $499, 501, $499.5, $498. So this is 501. That was a half a thou over. So this should give us a half a thou clearance if we use this one. So how you can hold on to this? Wow. Your teeth? <laughs> Ah! I think we need a drill truck, what do you think? Yeah, that's probably what we need. 
I just have another drill chuck. Like that. I got a hand drill. Or a hand reamer. Trying to get to center it up to where it's going to go. See, I'm letting it self center. All right. Gonna come out the back side now. I get a reamed hole. Got chips on my workbench too. I don't like that. This is not a machine shelf over here. This is an assembly area. I'm not supposed to have chips over here. Burnishing the hole in because this is rough as a cob and reamers leave marks on there. I just kind of lines them up. Okay, next problem is we got to make sure this lines up over here. So if you look at this right now, see how it's hitting on this bottom corner right here and it's not hitting on the top. So this needs to be needs to be go this direction right here because it needs to go that way on that side. These covers are flexible because they're aluminum, so you can actually bend them a little bit. You gotta get these so they line up. I got worse that time. Hmm. Well, obviously, he doesn't like doing what I'm doing, so go the other way. Even though it looks like it needs to go that way, looks like it needs to go back where I just had it. Just getting freer. Mm -hmm. so you have to be able to work. It's going to have spring tension to come up and down. It has to be pretty free. See how it's open? It likes that. So we'll give a little bit more. It's getting nice and relatively yep. free there. Yep. It's getting tighter. I don't want too far. So that's our happy spot. Okay, now we put it in the direction it's actually going to use it. Is this way? You see, it's totally different. It's a lot more dragged that way. I don't know if that's the bushing doing it. On you know, this side, being a little bit too tight, which is always possible. You no, know, it's, it's definitely the cover because see, it's on the hidden top there. Yeah, see how it moves it. See how it moves it back. Yep. So this needs to go backwards this way. Get 
not like that. Oh, that made it worse. Yeah. I think we got it where we want it to begin with. So it didn't help in any way to do it. Which way did I beat it? Uh, I think I went this way. Yeah, you did. Okay, so let's try this here. See, that's not the problem. It's an alignment issue. Yeah, it's actually freer than it was. <coughs> That's not enough. I think the lever is going to return, though. It's pretty tight. Some of that is sealed, drag, right? but some of it is not. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna try reaming it. Again. I'm gonna push it toward me with the reamer just slightly. See if that helps us any. I don't like wallowing holes out sideways, but do something to get a little bit freer. Mm. Much different. Okay, now we try something else. Put the shaft on. I don't know which way it wants to I go. I think you want to go back the other way. It seems like it was a little freer. I don't know. That's about equal. Maybe slightly better that way. It's hard to tell. It's not making much of a change, but... If I didn't have this gasket all but tightened up tight and glued on, I could loosen all these screws up, put it kind of self-center, and then put it back on. But see, the old shaft was loose, so it wasn't a problem. Right. Now we made a part change, because I didn't know that was bad before. I think we're going to have to live with it at this angle. Now I'm making a grinding noise in here. You can hear it. And it's not going all the way in. So this is too fat. It's, this is way too big through here. Mm -hmm. See how it's making a mark on a in there? Yeah. A big line. So I need to I need to go with the grinder and grind a piss out of this thing to get this down smaller in diameter. Because it's too damn big. These things don't fit most of the time, these aftermarket ones. They're just too stinking thick. So I need to grind this diameter down. I need to do at least for 180 at a turn. Because that has that whole area in there plus you gotta turn it 90 degrees. So I need to grind it. I need to grind that off right there and probably a little more off this edge of this thing. This here gets away in a lot of cases, but see how this case is all cut out? There's nothing to hit against mm -hmm. in here. So this isn't a problem on this case. Other cases there's stuff in there it hits against and you gotta grind this whole knob off. Sometimes you spend a lot of time doing all this stuff. So I'm gonna take this one back and put it on my grinder. I'm gonna grind this down and we'll come back. Plan. 
All right, so we ground off quite a bit of that material. I ground a little bit off the OD, and then I also ground at an angle. You can see I, I held it on the grinder like this and ground, ground it off like this. So let's see if it goes all the way in now. Okay, now we're going all the way in now. We got more, a lot more spline sticking up than we had. Okay, the next thing is I'm going to go ahead and work on this a little bit. Mark right there. Okay, so I marked it. Okay, so, so we need to clean this area up right here and here. This doesn't matter. So we're gonna try to make this a little bit smoother. See how rough that is? Yep. So I'm work on that a little bit. And put this away also. External home. We're going to do some external honing. Everybody should have one of these in the garage. <laughs> An external home and a driver for it. The driver comes in handy for other things too. Okay, six jaw chuck will not hurt the splines all that much. Pretty straight. the hone on there? Yeah, maybe I should put the hone on there. Maybe I should lubricate the hone a little bit of oil too while I'm at it. Just to be different. small sizes. Okay. Now see what it catches that. You know what it's gonna do to my hand, don't you? Yeah, it's gonna catch on to that side and it's gonna rip it right out of my hand and try to break my wrist off. Could call that a safety issue. Yeah, it's a. You think it might be one? Slightly. With this speed here on a hurt. Don't worry, I'll, I'll catch it all on video. All right. <laughs> You're not seeing how close that was to hit me. Got to about within 15 thou there. I don't really want to be standing behind you when it breaks your wrist. <laughs> well, that would hurt when it hits you at that RPM. I would definitely feel that. I'll guarantee you I would have felt it. I got my clean rag here. It's not a polish rag. You could polish with it. There's yeah, grit in there. <laughs> not now. The metal. There's grit in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so, see the difference here? Right. Yeah, not grabbing your nail as much. Yeah. All right. All right, you go the other way, going this way. Uh, 
out of there. Okay. Now let's clean up and see a little difference in the finish. Now let's see if we got any improvement. Out the drag, look at that. I probably took out three quarters of the drag. So now it feels like usable now. Shift lever won't be wobbling all over the place anymore either. That'll be different. Well, the fact that it's going to have a new motor mount and, well, three new motor mounts. <laughs> well, you didn't know that the motor was loose in the frame before, so. It was just floating in there. We can't vouch for much for you. You know, you're holding a bike, motor in the frame was the uh, oil on it, I think. <laughs> the, the uh, yeah, basically. Nobody uses a Zerk for him, so I don't really worry about it. Even I replaced the bushings, I don't even put holes in them. So I don't think the Zerk even fits anyway, or works anymore. No. No, there's no hole in there. So I won't stick a grease gun on there and try you to... Can't, it'll tighten it up. <laughs> it'll tighten up the shifter because it'll squeeze the bushing into it. I think it makes it even freer now. That actually works. I got no clearance. It's tons better than what it was. We could have done that before. Okay, our junk pile is growing over here. It is. Okay, now we got to find some other parts. Got the stuff that hides parts of there. Okay. Because I have to look for a bunch of little roller bearings. See these things? Yep. I need those. So these are kind of needed. I can feel a little bit of dirt or something on them, I'm not sure. Well, what. they've only been sitting back there for a year. Yeah, up there in a clean box. Well, it's probably just dust, you know. I think there's dust in my air. I don't keep a clean shop here. <laughs> Is there a point in there? Jeez, call me a filthy pig right in the face. Oh, no. <laughs> that's it, I'm not going to work on your back no more. Yeah, that's it. You finish it up. That's all you... <laughs> oh, I have to finish it now? No, no, that's what you tell me. I'm done. It's all you. Finish it up. There's all those extra rollers over there. Find all kinds of them. I don't think they're extra. Those aren't extra? Do you need every one I'm of those? I'm pretty sure. I need them all. Oh, yeah, look at that dirt came off. Work our way over the clean side of the rag. There we go. Yeah, they don't have grit on them anymore. Eh, maybe that's just uh, solved the residue. Yeah, from a year ago. Oh. Uh, over here. See, I purposely hid the washer over here so I don't lose it. Now this does not go against this washer here. This is your main shaft thrust washer. So that's your end play. You know, so it's getting hot. And this does not go right against that. This goes inside here. See a snap ring over in there? See that snap ring buried up in there? Mm -hmm. Snap rings have a little groove in them. Bearings come out those grooves. This washer keeps the bearings from coming out of the grooves. And for some reason, people don't like putting them in there. I don't know why. So they give you a hard backstop. Keeps your bearings from coming out. Well, I really can't where it matters. I have another problem. This, see this tit right here on the end of the shaft? It might be too long. It might butt up against this here. Right there. 
and lock everything all up. That's happened. More than once. So that's going to be one of the things we've got to check when we put this together. Okay, so first thing I'm going to put the bearings in here. So you notice I have a liberal amount of grease in there. So now when you put the rollers in there, they might actually stay put. Now you can either push them in from this direction, which I don't particularly like doing it this way, but you can see how it works, kind of. Like that. I prefer doing it this way over here. You can do two rollers at a time, but don't do any more than two. You can control two, you can't control three. You know how I know? Because four doesn't work. <laughs> See the grease holds them in there? Yes, sir. See that grease in it? See that dirt right there? The dirt or rust? It came off my clean rag. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It came out of that box over there. That was not a clean bearing. You preferably would be best not to have that in your transmission. Yeah, that was the only one that had that on there, too. Yeah, that, yeah, that was grease on that one. Put a good layer of grease in here that you might be able to get this in and out once without having it all come out. If you're lucky, you can do it twice. My record's about five times before it rips them all out. Most of the time, you get one, maybe. <laughs> <coughs> okay, that's the last one we got, so hopefully, it's the last one we need. It doesn't fit in there, so. See when the bearing won't fit, you take them and rotate them all. And you try it again, see? That went in. Because every roller has a little bit of a gap in it. Mm -hmm. So when you spin them, it takes the gap out. Now you put a lot of grease in there. And that'll keep the bearings in there a little bit longer. Messy, huh? Okay, I got this one over here. Put that down. The other half of the puzzle. I put a bunch of grease right here, too. And most of the time, the washer will stick to the case in there. Hold the bearings in so you can do this more than once. Without losing it. Okay. Oh, there's my dirty rag. See, now it wouldn't be all red like this. Okay, now that has to be held up in the spot it's in right now at 90 degrees. It has to go right into this groove right here. Right here. Mm -hmm. Camera. It has to drop into that groove or it won't shift. It's kind of important. So just kind of fish down in there. Got two dowel pins, one there, one down there. Here it's solid. I feel no end play. It's hitting on it. Probably gonna lock up. I'm gonna do that shift lever here. Okay, we're engaged. See, it's, see how it returns back? Mm -hmm. So that means we got the bushings working good. Okay, it takes four bolts to hold this on. I had them sitting where I could get to them quickly. Of course, that was a while ago. Looks like I need to go over to here now.
up. Always a good sign. See how it's not oh, that's nice. See how it's not returning? Yeah. No, you, no, you see how it's not going back. Oh, right, right, right. Remember you was doing it before? Right. So why is it doing that? It's hidden inside. It's hidden on the end of that shaft in there. We have to take the shaft and shorten it. So we're negative 5 thou right now. So, so we just got to get that nub off the end there. So right? we got to take off about 10 to 15 off there. So we got a little clearance. Because we don't, you can't have it like that. Right. right. It just doesn't shift very well. Right. Okay, but we do have clearances in here. So on this style tranny here, what you do, see how the sparing goes in and out here? Yep. So when you push on the clutch, it doesn't pull this out. It pushes it in like this. So what you have to do is push this in with your palm here, and then you check your end play over here. See, I don't feel any in play. Mm -hmm. Now, if I take down my hand off that, see all that in play we got? Okay. When I go like that, mm -hmm. we got none. So, your negative clearance from this, too, also. That's why that washer had a little bit of heat in it. Yeah. So, the bearing has worn to the point now that whatever in play this we put when I put this in there originally, I assume I did this before, then the um, we've lost that. So, I need to loosen that clearance up a little bit. Now the counter shafts down here, we don't have that wear issue on that. I just take this plug out of here to check the in play on that, but it turns freely, so that should be okay. So I gotta take five thou out of this washer here, the big one, and I gotta take about 15 off the shaft here, 10 to 15 off that. So we have to make a couple minor adjustments. So once again, even though it's a quick throw together, we're rebuilding as we go. Because nothing is quick crushing. <laughs> nothing is not needing repair when you're into it. You always find something wrong. Even though it was working, he wasn't happy. But that, that just how, I mean, you can already tell how much better it feels than it was before. With it was rattling like crazy right. before. And we had all new fresh parts in there. So that shaft is 5,000 bigger than what your shaft was. That's a bunch. Now to get this out, just whack it right here. It's free. Okay, now the bearings are going to come out, they're going to stay in. They're going to stay in. You're dreaming. Oh, uh, you lucked out. When I tell you the washer stays in, it helps keep them in there. Yep. See the washer's in there. Yep. You see the little gear came out. Because the little gear was engaged in your speedometer drive. So we know we gotta fix we gotta fix this. And we gotta fix this. See the wear this in this? Yep. It's going kind of deep. That's that negative clearance that we have right now. Now if you were holding your clutch in at the stop likes like all these stupid schools train you to do, this would be melted and you have a burned up gearbox. See that heat transfer right there? Right. It was already getting a little hot. You can see the wear mark in there. It's pretty deep. You can see a little bit of blue on the tang. And you can see the heat transfer. Because it's, it's a negative clearance when you get the clutch in. That's why you don't hold clutches in on a Harley. Especially on Sportsters. Four-speed Sportsters, anyway. That's why I don't agree with these stupid fools. <laughs> used to ride stupid-ass jet bikes, I guess. Don't give us crap about what they're doing. Okay, so I gotta figure out what our clearance was. Can't measure anything except where we're at. 10. Okay, so we're at 60 thou. I know it's negative right now and it's wearing. I like 8 to 12, so I'm gonna drop this 10 thou. So we're gonna drop down to a, a, a 50 on that. And this over here, we know we got to drop this a little bit right here. 
So let's go do that too. I'm gonna take a leak. Set up my light here. Too low now. Setting my bit height. Maybe be at center line or slightly above. Get a good finish. You don't hit on this, so it's kind of important. Okay, we're gonna set our indicator over here. or so off. That should be enough. This is going to be really sharp right here, so you got to be careful. Don't bang those expensive wheels behind you. No shit. Sorry. It's about $1,200 to get the bang you do. Are those you want on my bike, huh? Yeah. <laughs> They could, but the customer not be happy to go on your bike. That's going to be a couple weeks project. Start working on that one. What's that? Hopefully. Th those are going on? Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully. <laughs> All right, so we got that cut. So that should be good to go. Okay, that one's done. What's that? Hmm. Appear to be washers. Brand new. Some are. Some aren't. Which one do you want? The one that works. Well, there's one that's used. Maybe as bad as the one I had in there, though. These are the ones out of my race bike. See, I cut the tangs off. There's another used one. These appear to be popular when they're used. See, that one's in there for a mock up and taken out. That one's a used one. Oh, there's a new one. i to go down to six to get to a new one. There you go, that's ten thou coming out, or nine thousandths. But it's less than that because I can't measure how much the wear is here. Right. So it's going to be at least five more clearance minimum. We're not sure how much. But we're going to have some clearance. You can keep that for your souvenir list. Add to the crap pile. Your memento pile. Remember that one? What's that? Your memento pile. Yes. Know. So why do you cut the tang off on the race bike? They don't need a tang on my race bike. I had to get in my way a few times. But screw this thing. I'm getting rid of it so I cut them off. <laughs> There's a pin in there. See up here? Yeah. Anti-rotation pin? Yep. And yours is basically about the same height as the race, so it's been knocked off. Or somebody beat it in further than it's supposed to be. So when you put this trap door together, and if it hits on this tang, up here. So when you put the transmission together and the tang is in a way, it locks everything all up and you think there's something wrong. Ah. You take it apart, try to figure out what the hell happened, because I had clearance, now I don't. What happened? Well, it's because you're hitting here. Then you look at the tang, it's all bent over like that. Oh, okay, I see what happened. So, see, I don't put them straight up, I put them off the sides when I put them in. Just learn from practice. But uh, on the race bike, I don't need stuff like that in my way. And I don't have any of that stuff in there on my race bike. It's completely different anyway. So I don't use stock bearings on my race bike. 
So the tang actually gets in the way of my bearing. And if you go watch the race bike videos, you'll see how that one's put together and you'll know. Okay, so right now we're in here and we're hitting on this. You see how you engage it into that? Mm -hmm. So it's in the fork now. And hopefully that is a problem. You know, see now it slides up in there a lot easier. Got a nice set slid on. Ah. Okay, so now <clears throat> we'll do another mock up. Do a lot of mocking up around here. Only because it's needed. So is everything going to work now? I believe so. At least you hope so. I have faith. <laughs> At least somebody does. We need a lot of it around here. I could physically put them all together, back together, apart, and all that in probably three hours, but two hours is really going now. That <laughs> but your motor were on the fourth day, so <laughs> there's always problems with these damn things. Okay, so there's that. So, first thing we do is check the clearance here. See that clearance in there now? Yep. See, people see that much, you get scared. So when you push that in, it drops down to the sides. But now we got clearance. So now you got some room you can pull the clutch in and hold it a stoplight like a dumbass and not bring it up. See how it springs back? Better now, yeah. Still a little gummy, but it springs back. Okay, now I want to see if it shifts. Now it's like a race bike, it's reverse shift pattern right now. So one up is low. Quite as bad on this direction, but it still does it. <coughs> Guess what? Can we take it down a couple more thousands? I'm not sure what the problem is. I just know it's not correct. My guess is something to do with the shaft in there is hitting on the inside of the fork, and there's going to be a mark. Be deeper on one side than the other. Well, the bearing stayed this time. Hell no, why would it do it two times in a row? But it shifts good. Where I beat it in real hard quick. Uh -huh. That's important because it shoves it out of the bearings real quick before it has time to drag out. It's not just because I like hitting on it. I do like that too. Use your palm. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, it stayed in there like it was supposed to. Even low gear almost came out. Ooh, what's that? That's what it's hitting on. So, what's it hitting on? Marks? Yeah. I told you there's going to be a mark in there. Yeah, so it's hidden. Just that piece of crap finger I told you gets in the way on some bikes. That I didn't think there was going to be a problem on your bike. Uh, well, that was wrong. Okay, so we want to knock these burrs off. Mm -hmm. Put this loose metal in here. Okay. Okay. So what do you think's hitting? Am 
My guess is these things here. Mm -hmm. So we need to grind this whole thing off quite a bit to get out of the way. It's not hitting extremely hard because it's you know it's not locked up completely. But right. It's enough. We got to grind this whole corner off. So I'm gonna take this much of it right off. This whole thing right here. Okay. Like this. Let me get the camera where you can see it. Sorry. See, it's real good when I'm over here. I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> looking. looking at I'm not looking at the screen. I'm looking. I gotta grind this much. Oh, okay. Did you even show the mark where it's hitting? Yeah, I showed it. You sure? Yeah. I don't know. We gotta get all kinds of comments. Fuck them. Oops. Excuse me. Sorry. Oh shit. <laughs> there we go. There goes the in the video. Damn. That was like two I haven't been banned on yet. What? Banned? I... Well, we'll see if, I'll see if they get marked at five I put up this morning. I probably got three of them probably banned already. They like tagging me. Shoot, I watched the one with the uh, booby trap. Every other word is... Yeah, I went through just fine, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that one. Every other word is MF. And... Well, they just started uh, uh, tagging those things, so... Okay, I'm gonna get over here. Pretend like I know what I'm doing here. I won't even cut my fingers anymore. I'm really sharp every time I have it. I hope I'm not bad. I don't like that running high speed because the stupid ass thing has got a wobbly shaft in it. That's what happens with these cheap ass American made import <laughs> crap. <laughs> I'm not sure it's American made there, but it sure South American? It sure wasn't the different <laughs> one there. Okay, so now that's all ground away, nice and smooth. It's like it should have been from manufacturer, but it didn't, so hopefully it'll clear. Alright, let me get that cleaned up, we'll be back. Let me repeat that. See clearance in there? It looks like it might work now. Now the next thing is going to hit, it's going to hit right here. Now I can already see what it is, look at that. See that mark right mm -hmm. there? So it's bottomed out in the bottom of that, because I shortened it here. See that was going to be the next thing it was going to hit. Yep, oh, it is. So that, now these are probably hard. Yeah, see how hard that is? Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't doing nothing. Back to the stone. So this has to be ground. Just a little bit right on the tip to get room. So I'm gonna take that in the back and get that real quick on the grinder. I bet you still hits on there a little bit. We'll see. So I ground it a little bit here, radiused it off a little bit. It might still be hitting enough, it might be a problem, but hopefully it's not. You can see how the angle of this is not quite perpendicular. Let's see, it comes up a little bit here. So when we ground this, it caused other problems here. And that's how close it was. But, oh well. Not the first time. Guess what? We do another mock up. Get a lot of those around here. Okay. Washer's still hanging in there, so. 
Let's see if that continues. Slide in this time. Something solid. I think that, I didn't put the washer on the main shaft, so I think it was catching that washer on the lip in there. So I kept spinning it lightly, hitting it until it went up over the edge. Once it's pulled all the way in, then the whole thing slid in. So don't just start beating on it with a big hammer and <laughs> put it in there until it goes in. Just because I'm using a hammer doesn't mean I don't know how to use it. Some people only have one hammer I hit. Full speed. Okay, how many times are up to now? I think it's number three. Nope. Yeah, that's number three. No. Four. Four? Well, maybe this is fourth time the charm we want to go for that record. Well, we're a long ways from the record. You said five, right? <laughs> So five times in a row without having the bearings come out. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> How many times to take the training? Oh, yeah. No way. Shit, get the car do it one day, come back the next day is more like it. Put it still in there. It's still dragging on the ball a little bit. It's a little, right. a little slow in there. We're not sticking on the flat shift. So that's all the way down. Pops up. See, we're not hitting on that part. That's how we shift the rate by just like that. And just hammer it. Speed shifts. Yeah. It shifts, but I bet you we're tight on that ball a little bit. Right there, it's not. See that, see that area right there? That's right on that center point where the ball's at. It's got pressure on it. So, you want to play with it or leave it? It'll work. It'll wear in, yeah. Good chess. So just dead center's a little unhappy. So you like it there? You live with it? I can live with it. Okay, I'll let go grind that ball some more. I don't care the way because it works fine. It's just, yeah, it's just not dead perfect right now. It's not going to affect at all how it runs. Okay, so now... I'm going to get to move on to something important. Which is what? Putting the gasket on and gasket. Well, we gotta find that that drain plug. Drain plug would be nice wherever you hit. That's it. important. Only if you put oil in it. <laughs> if you don't put oil in it, you don't need a drain plug. Yeah. 
Maybe you need a primary drive. Oh, that's yeah, primary drive. Yep. Maybe someone just maybe start it. Yeah. Want to be able to start? It's it been so long since I take this thing apart, man. You're forgetting the different things you need to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta do a few things. You, know, you can even put lock washers on these or not. Lock tight or not. Oh, you better. Better what? Put lock tight on. <laughs> if you're not gonna put lock washers, and even if. I'd... I'm not much for the lock washer part. Yeah. But we can put them on if you want. No. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they had them on there. Would... Well, I got a bunch of lock washers laying around here. They're all squashed flat, so I don't know what they were from. And I'll keep the same right size. They're the right size. They are squashed flat. Yeah, somebody might have maybe over torqued them. Got a couple of these in there, too. I'm not sure what those are from. It's not four of anything. We only have four lock washers that's there. A chrome one, but I would never put a chrome one inside of a motor. <laughs> that would not happen. There's another chrome I know one. where that chrome one goes. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Oh, shit. Look, acorn. Another one. Shit, they're cloning. I don't know. I don't particularly like lock washers too much. I just use Loctite, that's all I do. If anything, I'll put a real washer on there so I can torque it better. Those are flat enough to almost be real washers. As long as they don't split, I don't care. Uh. If you over-torque a lock washer, it unrolls itself and splits. Then it falls out and breaks. And you got that piece of crap lock washer running around inside the train. Inside the primary drive. It usually doesn't do good things for it. Bounce off the chain. I don't think it bounces too much off the chain. I think it just bounces into the chain. Okay, so we got a little bit of torque. Right there. Right there. Right there. We're torqued. Oh, it still works. Still works. Okay, here's how we have it. So there's how you do your transmission. Wonderful, huh? Beautiful. Right, I'm going to look for a trans plug. I'll be back.